60 minutes overtime. So have a seat. Okay. And you can read through if you want. All right. With the global economy at risk of recession, the man for the job is a woman. The process of joining 60 Minutes has, in a way, been familiar. I started in journalism at Time Magazine, which is the kind of journalism that Don Hewitt was thinking about, magazine journalism. Good evening. This is 60 Minutes. It's a kind of a magazine for television. It was all about storytelling. And so, in a way, the journalism at 60 Minutes and the storytelling and the depth and the marinating in the topic is exactly why I got into journalism. And so, when I was a kid, if you asked me which correspondent I first kind of knew whatever even a television correspondent was while watching on those Sunday nights with my family, I feel <laughs> like it was morally safer. And here we are. On a morally safer story was well written, crafted. It is on rare days like this that you must ask, do they really pay me to do this? Yes and was gonna take you in any number of fascinating directions. And so it's thrilling to have his office. If I had to pick one, I would have picked his. I grew up in a household where 60 Minutes was a program that we watched every Sunday. My mother was a journalist, and she not only watched 60 Minutes, but she watched 60 Minutes with a notebook because she was taking notes on the storytelling that was there. Bye-bye. Thank you, good luck. Danny Kay at the National Guard Armory here in Washington. My mom, who was the first woman news correspondent for CBS News, who worked at CBS for 10 years before they would let her on the air. This is Nancy Dickerson in Washington. Never saw me actually on the air before she passed away. Good morning and welcome to Face the Nation. I'm John Dickerson. On I'm Gail King with John Dickerson and Vladimir Duty. So she Street would be probably CBS. first astonished that I was on TV. Uh, second, astonished that I still was gainfully employed in uh, some kind of journalistic enterprise. And then I think she would be, uh, I think she would be very proud. So she went out every, every night? To shoot the first 60 story that you ever worked on in Normandy is a pretty amazing place to go for your first story. And for me, it had additional resonance because I interviewed Christine Lagarde on Omaha Beach, where my stepfather had actually landed as a part of the D-Day Normandy invasion. And so to be at such a beautiful place in such quietude when you know what happened there 75 years ago, it's a, the disconnect and the dissonance between those two made it an even kind of richer experience. Welcome to your own office. <laughs> Thank you so much, John. <laughs> the art of the interview, which all of the 60 Minutes correspondents know how to do beautifully, is one of my favorite things in journalism because it is a way to get information from people. So if you remove some of the testosterone, what are you bringing in? What are the qualities? Estrogens. Yes. <laughs> now that Diversity, we're done with our, there yes. we go. <laughs> that makes it more lively and more alive for viewers, because how do we translate information in our normal day-to-day? -day? Through conversation. Mm -hmm. You've talked a lot about confidence, mm -hmm. and you've also talked about the role love plays in confidence. Yeah. How are they connected? One fuels the other. Just fascinated oh. in why someone thinks the way they think, what they think. And you have had been the first chair of the largest law firm, the first how they've come to those ideas, how they would explain that to other people, and then to get them to tell stories themselves. Uh, and then you get to show that to other people. And that's, uh, that's why we get into this business. Keep your head straight, <clears throat> and, and do I'm, or yeah, just, yeah, okay, I'm yeah. It's not just my name. No. I'm John Dickerson.